Hi guys, and hello from the hilltop. I'm Waxahachie Blue, and I want to welcome you to my channel, The Plateau Perfectionist. Today's video is my August 2021 plan with me in my pink mackerel tekukor dot journal bullet journal. So, a little explanation as to why I am currently drawing a lion. The theme, uh, for those of you who don't know, I am doing a color challenge for the year of 2021, working my way through the uh, rainbow spectrum, and my color for the month of August was actually indigo. So if you happen to have watched my July 2021 plan with me, a lot of the images that I used in my July had a lot of indigo tones, so when it came to what I was going to do for this month, I kind of had a giant brain fart, for a lack of a better term. So I am uh, affiliated with a few uh, Facebook bullet journal groups and I actually, one of the larger groups, I put up a poll as to suggestions on what I could do for this particular month and I ended up with uh, quite an overwhelming suggestion of like astral space theme uh, to go with the blue and blue purple tones that are affiliated with the color indigo. Uh, however, at the same time, August is also Leo season, and so I decided to combine the two and create this, which uh, you're going to laugh when I call it this, but that's what I've been calling it, um, Blue Space Lions. Uh, cue the Voltron jokes if you happen to know what that is, but uh, long story short, um, my sister is a Leo, and so that was also partially kind of what inspired me to do this, but I've actually never drawn lions. Uh, when it comes to animals and whatnot, first of all, I have to have a reference picture like you see me uh, working with here. But at the same time, um, even then, they don't always necessarily come out 100% accurate. So, especially cats. I have an issue with cats. I draw cats all the time, and the reason I draw cats all the time is because I'm not very good with them. But uh, regardless, uh, so I used a reference picture here, and this particular picture will end up being the uh, cover picture. As for why I'm drawing it on this paper instead of in my bullet journal, is because I also decided to incorporate watercolor. Uh, when it comes to the color indigo in and of itself, I don't have any items per se to really get that indigo color across. So I decided to do a watercolor uh, so I could kind of get that spatial, astral, cosmic look to my my image here. Not only that, but it was also excellent practice on doing wet-on-wet uh, -wet watercolor. So the paper here is a mixed-media paper that I got off of Amazon. It is designed to take watercolor. And I just kind of used uh, this family dollar cheapo watercolors because I don't do water very, watercolor very often. I just don't, I don't have the, the time or the patience to invest in good quality watercolors. So I just use, you know, from, from the family dollar. And so I'm just painting this particular lion. Uh, I did several different lions. This one, like I said, is going to be on the title page, cover page. And another reason I wanted to do them on this particular paper is because when I did my... I've only done watercolor in my bullet journal once before, and that was for October 2020. And that time I did dragons, which was one of my personal favorite for the year 2020. However, while the Tekakor that I was using at the time did take the watercolor like a champ, uh, it did cause the pages to uh, ripple real bad. So I opted to do my watercolor uh, images on mixed media paper so if they happen to warp it would not necessarily damage my bullet journal and not only that but I could if I messed up then I could just start over again on a different page so as you can see uh, obviously the colors are not exactly following exactly like my my picture here and I actually ended up doing three different layers when it came to uh, painting, you have to let it dry in between layers. As you can see towards the top of the page, uh, it was really already starting to ripple because it was so saturated with water. And you just kind of have to take your time, do patience, and then something else that I opted to do was to stick primarily with this one large brush in order to get the, the colors. One, the picture was just so large, the big brush worked just fine. 
Uh, another was I really just kind of wanted to the colors to, to ebb and flow very evenly. And so I kept with the same brush throughout all of the lines that I ended up doing. So uh, the colors that I used in question was primarily the blues and purples and then just a hint of pink in certain spots uh, just to add a little, little extra, a little extra pop. And that was how I ended up doing the, or hoping to get across the indigo. I would have loved if these turned out a little darker, but by the time I was done with my third layer of color, I was kind of tired of adding color. So they ended up very um, soft in their colors. So the second page was actually the last page that I ended up doing it. I apologize for the lighting. I forgot to move one of my lights when I started working on this page. So that's why it's kind of dark to the right side. Um, I really wanted kind of a little mini calendar uh, for my title page. And I was actually planning on doing the Leo symbol as the letter A for August. And I was planning on doing it in white. However, for some reason, it didn't really show up, I think because the color watercolors were just so light by the t even after the third layer of coloring, and so I did end up doing it in black. So how I managed to get these particular images uh, into my bullet journal was I painted these on individual pages and then I took them, uh, my particular computer uh, or printer, home printer, is not the best printer, but I do have uh, availability to use a secondary uh, document scanner. That's what I'm looking for, a scanner. And so I used the uh, better quality scanner. I got them all scanned and digitized and then shrunk them by, uh, saved them as JPEGs and then shrunk them using the HP 
image printer thing if you have an HP that hopefully you know what it's broken. Um, so for this particular page, there is no lion because it will be paired with the other lion that I just uh, painted. So this one was just to have a little bit more of a cosmic vibe, to have my mini calendar as, my, uh, as part of my title page, and uh, just that's how I decided to do it. Um, yeah, so hopefully y'all had a wonderful July. My July was very busy. Uh, my, we had a vacation Bible school and all this other stuff. My August will be particularly busy as well. Uh, I have a wedding to go to as well as some things to do with my niece who is going away to college and it's just going to be fun, fun, fun. Uh, sorry for the mild moment where you see my face. So this particular page and the page that follows with is the the pages that will be my two-page calendar. That's why there's this giant chunk that's missing. And this was actually one of the first pages that was I was really inspired to do the lion. I wanted I found this perfectly posed um, uh, image here. All of the images that I found are off of again like my favorite place in the world, Pinterest. And I really wanted this idea of this this cosmic lion, almost like Mufasa from Lion King, coming out of uh, from behind my calendar. And I, that's just kind of the image that I had in my head. And so how I get these particular uh, lions on the page is I start with a pencil sketch. Hopefully you can see the pencil lines that I'm following. And then what the black lined markers that I'm using, I believe, are the Tombow Fudenosuke hard tip and soft tip pins. The one I'm currently using is the hard tip and then for to get kind of the thicker lines I use the soft tip. I opted uh, to do the outlines first because I had experimented with this again uh, the last time I did watercolor doing both the outline first as well as the outline last. And I found that I like doing the outline first because then I can erase the pencil lines and you just, um, you can't, you, you don't see the pencil lines. Whereas if you paint over the pencil lines, then they're stuck there forever and they're very hard to get rid of. Um, but the Tombow Food News Gays do great with watercolor. Uh, they don't uh, run or anything of that nature. So that is why I personally prefer to do the outline first and then uh, work work with what I've got here. Uh, just as a side note, anybody who does watercolor, please don't be kind of mad at me for only having one cup of water. I know more uh, regular watercolorists do uh, have a clean water and a dirty water cup. I am lazy. I do not do watercolor very often, so I just had the one cup. Uh, P.S. Thank you to my sister who gave me that particular Winnie the Pooh cup for Christmas. <laughs> this is what I use it for and I love it. So there you go. Thank, thank you, Wendy. Um, and so I just, I had this, this one lion on the other side of the page. I just did a little quote, which you will see later. And um, yeah, I just kind of went with it. Something I had, this was actually the page where I decided I would start doing the um, stippling watercolor um, sprinkles to kind of give it more of an, an astral look, cosmic look, if you, whatever you want to call it. Um, but in the meantime, that's, that's just kind of how I went. And yeah, uh, something I did also want to keep consistent was a, a relatively cohesive look with the lions, especially with the, uh, the pink in the eyes. I thought that really kind of gave each line uh, cohesion as well as a bit of a, a pop. See, uh, adding the little pink as well as a little pink to the nose and just here and there to give it some oomph. Um, yeah.
So I have, uh, oh, so I skipped the secondary page. So you, you don't see me do the quote, it, but to be fair, that's honestly totally fine because it was just a quote with some extra um, watercolor around it to kind of give it some cohesion. So the, I, I actually, this is two different lines. Uh, what I decided to do was while my lions may look totally fabulous on my, my video here, <laughs> uh, like I said, I am not very good at drawing lions and I really didn't want to push my luck much less uh, paint a bunch of lions yeah that was just too much work so I decided to be lazy uh, like you do and um, I ended up doing this lion and then a, a different kind of uh, close-up to a lion's eye on the right hand side and I ended up taking these two images and putting them uh, making Dutch doors for my weeklies and so the left lion will be on the left hand page and the right lion will be on the right hand page and then my uh, Dutch doors will be in between for my weeklies. Uh, this meant that I only had to technically paint uh, five, well no, five and a half, I'll say five and a half uh, pages uh, in total and I, but I still get my kind of aesthetic across uh, mostly because I will be very busy uh, I always give that excuse. I will be very busy. Um, I kept my number of, of spreads very simple. I did not do a mood tracker or anything of that nature uh, for this particular month, mostly because everything that I did, I did with paint, and I didn't actually use any markers per se. The only thing I used in the actual bullet journal other than my printouts of my paintings was my favorite black pen to kind of make lines and things of that nature. So I didn't actually use any any Tombos or, or anything of that nature. So so I didn't add any more mediums. I just kept my, my spreads very simple. I just had the title page, the mini calendar page, the two page calendar, um, my budget tracker, which I always have every month, and then these two lions and my weeklies. I will tell you a little bit more about those later, but in the meantime, let's just enjoy the painting. So, um, the one on the left, I don't think turned out as well as the one on the right, but I did try one small thing on the one on the right that I didn't try on any of the other ones, and that was to do a uh, wet on dry for the purple around the eye. That's why it looks a little different than the rest of them, which is all done wet on wet when it comes to watercoloring. Also, I apologize for the jostling. The way I had my camera set up for this, I didn't realize it was bumping into my desk, so every time I moved the brush, it made the camera jostle. My apologies for that. Hopefully it's not too um, distracting. Um, in the meantime, yes. <laughs> Now we are actually getting into putting everything into the bullet journal part. Um, like I said, I didn't do actually very many spreads for the month of August. I just because of all of the painting, the painting was very time consuming as you have seen as it takes up pretty much three quarters of this entire video. 
Um, but other than that, I, like I said, I scanned them, I put them in there, and I actually think that they worked really, really well. Uh, I also added just a smidge of washi tape because I did have a blue and a purple that really uh, kind of matched with the the um, watercolors, sorry, brain fart, watercolors that I used. And um, in the meantime, it was this pretty much consists of gluing and pasting. I did accidentally mess up on the lines for my calendar here. I had already kind of gridded everything out. And then last minute, I ended up um, deciding to do something weird with these lines in between my space. I, I, I don't even know what happened. Um, but uh, long story short, uh, it, I, I, I oopsed. <laughs> Sorry, but I did. Uh, at least I didn't mess up on the numbers. So huzzah in that small account. Uh, on a different subject, I might be doing a collaboration for the month of September. This is still kind of tentative. I had a young lady, uh, Sapphire Bujo, on YouTube uh, ask if she if I was interested in a collab. She actually asked for July, but by then I had already filmed my July and was in the process of editing it to get it out. And then, uh, pardon the pun, but I totally spaced on doing the collaboration for the month of August, which, uh, Sapphire, if you happen to be watching this, I, again, I apologize for that particular hiccup. Um, if she is interested or if anyone is ever interested in doing a collaboration, uh, the best way to get a hold of me in that respect is to actually find me on Instagram. That way you can direct message me. Uh, my Instagram tag is uh, at the Plata Perfectionist, all overcase with underscores in between each word. Um, just because that's how that particular algorithm worked. And yeah, if you are ever interested in anything of that nature, that is probably the best way to get a hold of me. Just so that because I don't, I don't know if there is direct message capabilities for YouTube. I honestly don't know. I don't have a community tab because I don't have enough followers. No, that is not a plug for you to follow me unless you honestly feel the in, feel feel inclined to do so. Uh, but that's just my. Uh, it, if I end up doing a collab, that is awesome. If you're interested in doing a collab, by all means, get a hold of me. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm just going to kind of keep on keeping on. So for the way that the weeks turned out for the month of August, there was that one Sunday as as day one, and I didn't like that. And for anybody who's ever watched my stuff, I go month by month. So I decided to do eight days for my first week. So it's one through eight. And then for each additional weekly, I kept with the eight spaces and just added a notes section. And then my last two days will be here on the back for the 30th and the 31st. And then, um, so you've seen my sticker calendars that I use every month. This will actually be where I track my weight for this particular month. Uh, just I'm just going to write it down each day. I'm actually doing really, really good. Uh, I finally broke my 100-pound threshold, which for any of you who have been following, I do keto and intermittent fasting, and uh, I've actually been stuck at around the 85-90 marker. So I was, I was super happy that I broke that threshold this past month. So here's my general flip through, uh, my lines here, my little mini calendar, my two page spread. If you happen to catch the oops, you're awesome. <laughs> and then just my rolling total tracker here, which I do for every month and my weeklies and my little white tracker at the end. If you liked this video, by all means, give it a big old thumbs up, uh, subscri subscribe for more great content. But in the meantime, thank you for watching and I will see y'all next week. Not next week, next month. <laughs> Bye.